Hey you guys, what's going on? Indecisive Blake here. So this is going to be a very quick tutorial on how to crank your Torx and keys on a 2002 GMT Yukon XL1500. One, I'm not reliable to anything done to your vehicle or if you get hurt. If you don't trust yourself doing this, get a certified technician or get one of your buddies or your father, whoever knows how to do something like this. You need the front end of the vehicle to be fully unsupported. Now, as you guys can see, I've got a jack stand with the jack, just in case my jack decides to collapse. You guys can see I can spin the tire freely and I've got two jack stands. But what you're doing basically is when you're cranking the torsion keys, when you raise the front and the suspension, it actually lowers the control arm. Because what you're doing is, let's say this 18 millimeter socket is um, the upper control arm. Now, if you're cranking the keys up, basically what the control arm is going to do. Now, let's say this is stock ride height down here if it has a rake to it. Now, when you're cranking those keys, everything's gonna move up then the back of this control arm has to go somewhere. So what a lot of people have a problem is they run into these bump stops down in here. So in turn, what you have to do is either just level it out enough so you still have enough travel for your upper control arms and not the bottom out on the droop stops, or you can actually get a full lift kit or just buy a body lift if you're looking to run bigger tires. Now these are stock 265, 70, 17. What you need is you need a 18 millimeter socket. It doesn't have to be a deep well, a ratchet, an extension or if you have a big half inch or big half inch breaker bar, um, and make sure you do this with the suspension unloaded. I don't know how many times I can say that. I've seen so many videos on YouTube where actually people will crank these with the suspension still loaded. You can snap a bolt off, you can shear a key in half, you can actually shear a lock. So basically what you wanna do is take your ratchet on tightening, just put it on there and crank it uh, to your desired height. Now, if you crank it a little bit and you still have a good bit of thread strong on both sides and you take the vehicle for a ride, Keep in mind, suspension's going to droop down. It's going to settle where it wants. So you might have to crank one side uneven to the other to get fully leveled. Um, but usually, even if your torsion bars are old, this truck's O2, so it's almost 20 years old. Um, some torsion bars can be old, they can be worn out. Um, so keep that in mind. So if one side sits a little bit lower, that could be the torsion bars are just, you know, they're tired, they're a little worn out, or the key could be warped, whatever the case may be. But uh, as you guys can see, I got both of my keys I'll get it to focus in here. Both my keys are maxed out, uh, which is okay usually to max out stock keys because it won't touch the bump stops. Usually when you max the stock keys out, it's more than plenty, if not a little bit more to get uh, the truck leveled. Uh, but while it's down here, I'm just gonna max both sides. And then I'll go ahead and get cleaned up. Then we'll head to the alignment shop and see what the damage is. Okay, you guys. So I know some people are gonna be wondering about alignment. What does it affect? How much was it? So I wanted to touch base on this real quick. You guys want to pay attention more to this measurement. Uh, so this would be before I crank the keys. If we'll go over here to this new one from the day, and you guys can see where the red is. This was after I cranked the keys. Now, usually when you crank Torx and keys, it'll throw the camera off a lot, but I guess I got lucky, threw off the toe. It doesn't pull, I don't have any weird braking issues. It doesn't pull left to right, it doesn't ride any stiffer. Keep in mind, my truck also does have the air ride suspension, so it also does give a nicer ride if you just have like the conventional uh, shocks front and rear. All right, you guys, so it's later today, went to the alignment shop, got the truck aligned. Both keys and both sides are maxed out. Now these are stock keys and stock torques and bolts. I'll get the camera to focus in down here. You guys can see so I've got plenty of travel on these droop stops. Other than that, kind of stand back. Like I said, these are the stock tire size. Kind of give you an idea how it sits. This is probably the most level parking lot I have, um, close to where I'm recording this. So the truck might have a little rake to the front, but as far as I can tell, it's basically fully level. You go to the passenger side. There's the passenger side for you. So it kind of slopes, if you look at the ground, kind of slopes like this a little bit for water, um, the retained water. Other than that, it's not bad. Go down here. I'll show you guys these front bump stops. Two droop stops, you guys can see there. Plenty of room, not even touching the droop stops. So basically meaning that um, I don't need to get shock extenders because 
the droop is not enough for the suspension to basically max out the front shocks because basically you have like four inches of travel with the stock shocks um so and usually people will crank them two inches or they'll crank the front end up two inches and you'll have two inches of travel um so basically i'm good with that now as far as the keys go i'll see if i can try to show you guys this underneath but uh get the camera to focus so there's the passenger side key you guys can see that where you guys so here's the driver's side get the camera up there to focus in for you you guys can see basically that key is maxed maxed out with the adjustment on these adjustments so uh so technically the truck has no more adjustment and there should be plenty enough uh, 